everybody. Welcome to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. This is Hashtag Just Josh, and today I'm going to be talking about Cowboy Bebop. <sighs> series near and dear to my heart. I really, I really love this series. This is Space Serenade. This is a deck builder. Uh, of course, the series is licensed by Sunrise. This is a Jap anime game. Um, honestly, I have to say I love the lore for this game. This did a really, really good job of tying in um, different characters we all love, the villains we know throughout the series. This has all kinds of uh, imagery from around the series. We have you know, the locations that we all know as Earth, as Ganymede, as Mars. It's everything we love about the series, and you run around as the characters, actively trying to catch and just get you know get that money, get that hustle done. You need bounties to get the money and eat, because honestly, bell peppers and beef Minus the beef is just bell peppers. It's not really bell peppers and the beef. You have your characters that you all know and love from the show. You play as either Spike or Radical Edward or Faye or as Jet. And the four of you are running around the galaxy trying to collect as many bounties as possible. How do you do that? So this is a deck builder. Uh, you're going to actually, starting with your standard kind of you know, cards, stuff you do most decks. And just like any deck builder, then you can start buying better decks or better cards to upgrade your deck. Uh, you do that with cards you already have. You can then thin out the deck a little bit to make it really slim and yeah, streamlined. Or you can just chock it full with all kinds of great cards for finding clues, for attack cards, for money, for all kinds of stuff and fuel. Uh, you move around and try and catch each of the bounties. And these are all bounties you know and love. These are bounties that you've seen in the show. You have Asimov from the first episode. You have Shin for the little middle of the series or so that you know from Spike's old days, from his history. And you have the hilarious Chessmaster Hex. You have Tons of our fan favorites, all the characters you know. Um, and you get your bounties from, of course, Big Shot. So it really has the lore tied in well to the game, has good characteristics. And you move around the galaxy, sometimes it'll be more expensive depending on how much you build up fuel. I like this mechanic, because um, unlike a lot of deck builders, you just have a card that's put out that's whatever the new characters you're attacking. You have to work to get to these characters, and then you can start trying to capture them. A little bit different mechanic. Uh, you also have, uh, besides your fuel, you have your either uh, attack or clues you're trying to build up. Because you can, um, you have two options as to how you want to capture your bounties. You don't have to do it the same every way. If you decide to fight the, the bounty just fisticuffs, you know, hand to hand, because I mean, Spike is kind of reckless anyway. Uh, what you need to do is then start taking wound cards. Now, where this is different than a lot of mechanics you know from other deck builders, your wound cards don't clog up your deck as much. I kind of like that actually, because in other decks that can be a little bit frustrating. The other games where your deck just gets chocked full of wounds, you draw maybe two or three cards in you know, a turn, you don't really get that many cards to play, it can lose a little bit of excitement. For this, a lot of the wound cards actually cycle out really, really quickly. You have your wound card uh, deck stack over here, uh, those cycle through whenever you need those, and you just keep chasing those bounties. As you build up your uh, deck and start capturing more bounties, you're going to start getting renowned points through either attacking the bounties head on, like I said, getting counters by taking off them, or by collecting points from a stack of essentially clues. So you don't always have to capture them by force. So you get those from whoever you've captured, those go in a little stack, you capture that bounty, then they have points up here for renown, and then you get points for each of the, the chips you've taken off that card too. So there's two different ways to get points. From taking it off and from capturing the bounty. You get a lot more just from taking it off. Um, you also you get to fly around on the actual bebop. It's awesome. There's this really cool uh, little like a uh, flat surface that you can use for the, the figures. I really like the figures too. They have good detail, good articulation. And you get to move them around on the famous ship, going to different planets and capturing bounties. Okay, now how do you build your deck up? You've got a list of cards here, five at a time, that have a point value on the right corner. That tells you how much points you need to spend to get that card in your deck. When you buy those, they get added to your discard pile. And then eventually when you start shuffling through, this is not one of the ones where you have to worry about you know, decking it out. I don't think there are too many deck builders out there that do. Then you start actually building up your deck and really getting some good cards in there to attack more, to find more clues, to build up more points, whatever it is you decide to do for your strategy. As you use up each of these cards on the like on the panel that gets created there, then they get refreshed, or there's ways to just wipe the whole thing if there's nothing that really catches your attention. You can either spend two fuel, or there are other enemies that when they pop up, they will say, wipe all those, get all new cards. Most deck builders that have a character or a class as a theme for a deck usually have certain abilities that you know, you're used to seeing. This one is no different. You actually have each deck themed after each character and their style. Not only that, but you have combos. 
So your deck, say your spike, my favorite, and a lot of people's favorite, let's be honest. So your card is your blue cards. So it's color coded and really it's a good theme. Like it makes it really easy to spot. Now you can buy different cards that are not themed for your particular character, but combo with your character. It's a really cool mechanic. So where I have, let's say, a Fey and a Jet card. So Fey is yellow, Jet is blue. Now you notice at the bottom, there's a little blue tab that shows Spike. That means that on that turn, if you've already played a Spike card, you get a bonus effect on the card that you would not have otherwise. So it makes it actually for really good combos then that you can build off of the multiple characters in your deck. Not only that, but if you're yeah, if you're looking at the different characters, you have your base abilities that are outside of your actual deck. You can spend fuel in some cases, or like whatever the mechanic might be, but then either get extra research or get extra cards drawn, or maybe you get to you know spend you know money uh, from your fuel. You can convert your fuel into money, uh, depending on what any of the character's abilities are. Not only that, but if you are in the same location as one of the other characters on the, you know, the four locations, you may then use that character's first ability. Not their, um, their bigger, more powerful one. That wouldn't make sense, really. Um, but you may you know, borrow their ability from the first one um, if you're in that same location. So if, for example, here Edward is on the same location as Faye, Faye, for her main ability, may use two fuel as one uh, oolong. Edward may do the same thing. Pretty awesome combo. Once you capture enough bounties, you're going to start getting to the point where you're chasing after Vicious. Yes, the titular character that um, I think you meet in episode 4 of Memory Serves. But then you got to start chasing him around the galaxy. He does not stay on one location like most of the other uh, the bounty heads do. Yeah, every time he gets hit physically, he moves. And depending where he moves, there might be added fuel costs to go chase him if you know your fuel marker has moved up. So it might be maybe not in your ability at you know, a particular turn to you know, go after him. Uh, whoever does manage to take him down, you get some bonus points. Or if you all as a team, or if you're playing solo, if you cannot capture him before he runs out of locations to then go you know, dodging around in, then he escapes and you did not get him. There is a way to win still because whoever has the most points wins, but it's a minor victory. And let's be honest, nobody wants a minor victory. You want a major victory, you want to capture him. So you got to chase him down, and he's a little more dangerous to go after because, I mean, he's vicious. Uh, pun intended with the name. Overall, what did I think of the game? As a deck builder, I think it's really solid. Uh, I've played plenty of other deck builds before. The difference is, this one doesn't clog up your deck when you start taking wounds. I kind of like that because that can be frustrating in other games where it slows down what your turn actually is if you can even play very much. Um, and you can get rid of the wounds pretty easily. I also like that. You can't always do that in other decks. The deck builders. The, the components are really good quality. I like that it's nice solid cardboard. The fun little you know, colored cubes for a fuel and whatnot. The figures actually look like the characters from the show. I know there's plenty of other games that don't always look all that great when they try and take an IP into an you know, actual physical little you know character. These do a really good job of it. I think the game plays pretty quick. It's a lot faster than a lot of other deck builders have played. So you have that. That's pretty good replay value because the order that you get some of the, the characters in or the strategy you take, you don't always have to go physical. You can go uh, clue searching, you can go money based, you can go all kinds of stuff. And so it does have versatility and replay value. I like that a lot. I didn't see a whole lot of variety in the way of, okay, how can you really take down the bodies besides, you know, like trying to get around your opponents. There's not really a lot of interaction between the other characters. It's literally just um, who gets there first, who does the last damage, that person gets a bonus. So as much as it's semi-cooperative, it's not really all that supported. Like there aren't a lot of cards you can play that okay, help other people get more things than you know take off of the, the you know the research needed for the bounty. There are a little bit of take that mechanics. There's a few cards you can buy that make other characters discard, but that's pretty limited. So it doesn't get a little bit. Yeah, you know, it doesn't get too kind of like I hate you. You know, people who get a little bit salty at times. You're okay there. One card every now and again discarded. Not too bad. Just I really, really liked the like the tie-in for the lore of the show. They did a great job of tying in all the characters that you know and love in ways that make sense. It, it wasn't one where it's like you feel it's like forced, like okay, it doesn't really fit for what you're asking these characters to do or what the mechanics of the game are. This actually did. Everybody flies around on the bebop. Everybody goes down to different planets and tries to catch the bounties. And each of the bounties are are actually themed to a location. It's not you know that they show up anywhere in the galaxy. You know from the show that each of the characters was caught in a particular location on Mars, on Earth, or whatever. And they really did a good job of lining that up. And honestly, it's it's appreciated. 
But uh, for those that really know the lore, as always, that would have felt a little off. It just it, it's really, really well done. I would probably give this about four and a half bounty heads out of five. I really, really like this. The deck builders aren't my first go-to, but I do like playing them. I started playing a lot of games with uh, card games, so if you really like this game, or if you kind of like this game, or if you like any deck builder, or if you just want games in general, I would definitely recommend checking out the link in the description below. And always, I would say see you, you know see you guys next time. But given the fact that it's Cowboy Bebop, I kind of have to say, see you, Space Cowboy.